Hello everyone, uh, HG Nelson here and delighted to welcome you to this tremendous cricketing cassette. Now you'll notice uh, right from the top I'm talking very quietly because I'm in the Church of Cricket here in Nuriutpa. I'm in the Ian Botham vestibule and I've come to plead the case down on bended knee for the canonisation of St Alan of the Vulture Street end of the Gabba. That is our AB, that is our Alan Border with the saint, that is the big ST before his name. I believe he will become the first cricketing saint. That is the argument we put forward on this cassette. I believe we prove the case completely. If Mary McKillop is going to get the big ST before her name, I see no reason why our former great captain can't have it also. This is the quest. This is our quest. This is the grail. This is the trinity created by the three stumps at either end. But don't take my word for it, ladies and gentlemen. Let me introduce to you, here in the Ian Botham vestibule of the Church of Cricket in Nuriutpa, the Bishop of Slaughtering for the Northern Victoria area, position he's held for the past 15 years. He's also the chaplain of the Lithgow Abattoir, the High Priest of Pork, rampaging Roy Slaven. Welcome to the Church of Cricket, to the Ian Botham vestibule. How do you see St Alan's prospects? Yes, thank you very much, H.G. Nelson, and uh, I welcome everyone to this auspicious and august occasion. Uh, Gee, where do I start with someone like uh, Alan Border? I think we, what we have to do is find uh, events that have happened that defy rational explanation. Uh, that would be the starting point. And then we look for, I suppose, what uh, Wittgenstein would call the leap of faith uh, in arriving at a reason as to why these events have happened. And uh, if I don't know if we have time now, but I'd certainly like to instance or give one instance of uh, an event that uh, defies explanation as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I remember years ago when that uh, very, very funny uh, cricketer, uh, Max Walker, uh, Max, whose uh, work off the paddock I've enjoyed for many, many years in wide world of sport, and he's certainly one of the great, I think, after-dinner speakers uh, in this country, and a very, very funny bloke who's written many, 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 many books. Uh, the first few I think he didn't write, but just put his name to, and the last few he's written, and I think they're much better. And uh, I remember he, uh, he was very, very anxious... Uh, uh, quite a few years ago in the early 80s because he'd lost his notes. Uh, he'd been writing a book, I think, or dabbling with an idea, just a concept. It might have been how to, cr how to kiss a crocodile, I think it might have been. It was very, very funny. And uh, he, uh, he'd had most of it written out in longhand in an exercise book and had lost it. And he felt that he'd lost it in the dressing rooms at the SCG. Uh, this was uh, coming towards the end of his career. And uh, he was, uh, I remember seeing him in 1983, he was still what he described as spewing over it because uh, it was such a funny story, such a funny yarn, and he felt he'd written it very, very well. And uh, I, uh, I remember this was when uh, Alan Border had just taken over as captain of uh, the Australian cricket team. And uh, I remember one afternoon just leaving, uh, it might have been a match against the West Indies where Max was doing some very, very interesting commentary for, it might have been the Channel 9 crew, and uh, Alan came up to him at the end of the day, the day that Kepler Vessels had scored, a, had scored a century. Everyone thought that was an impossibility, but it did happen. And that defies, I suppose, rational belief that Kepler would get a ton. But Alan was at the other end, holding his end up and guiding him through it. Alan came up uh, in the car park there at the SCG and said, uh, Max, because I was talking to Max, as one does at the end of a day's uh, long commentary, he said, Max, I've got something for you. And just passed over a package was an exercise book. And uh, Max said, hello, thanks, Alan, what's this? And opened it up, and it was his story of how to kiss a crocodile. Alan had somehow found it in the dressing rooms of the SCG. But uh, as Max said, the book was pristine. The pages were whiter than they were when he had originally written it out. Not only that, the pages were lined. It was a lined exercise book. When he got it back, it was a botany book. There were no lines at all. It was just crisp, pristine white paper with his handwriting on it. And uh, Max sort of, sort of went, why? Alan had walked away. He had things on his mind, other things to do. He had ten other <clears throat> cricketers to be, to be worried about. And, of course, uh, Clive Lloyd's last fling as West Indian captain. He had a lot of things on his mind. No explanation given. And I tried to approach Alan about it later, and he said he just didn't want to talk about it. It was just one of those things. He found it, it was there, he gave it to Max, the book came out, it was an enormous success. That's one example, and there are many, of things, events, 
that just defy, I think, logical explanation. Football Brains Trusts, it's so hard for players to stay fit in summer. Sure, you can take them to Hollywood or Honolulu or Euro Disney, but this won't stop those lazy kilos larding onto the waistline. Now all your problems are solved, as Roy and HG are pleased to offer the football industry the Weary Dunlop Summer Premiership. This competition is much fiercer and more demanding than the winter go-round and therefore keeps your side very, very fit. That's the Weary Dunlop Summer Premiership, the competition that lets all your squad play 22 rounds of home and away matches without ever having to leave the house. Oh, this morning life in UNICEF proudly presents at the Hatton Marina Speedway a night for all the family. Pencil in December 18 for a night of non-stop action. Hang on to your pants when the hooting and hollering starts as 16 land race pigs are strapped into nitro-fueled slingshot dragsters racing snout to snout over the measured quarter mile. Be overcome with emotion and spot the slow coach when bleach Brahmin bulls are loaded in behind the wheel of 10 Kenworth 4,015 horsepower prime movers in a dash for cash round the world famous head and greeter dirt. And at half time, cack yourself senseless when the former PM and now daredevil Bobby Hawke drives a 1964 V8 Holt Ute round the two kilometre track nude with the cabin filled with deadly Taipan snakes from far north Queensland. That's right, car buffs, it's a night of pork, pork, and bull at Head and Greener. Be there. Roy, HG, and BHP have come up with an Australian first. Through the latest breakthrough in Ben Lexan Kevlar and tungsten tip technology comes sanferized kydetic magneto cotton, a substance so vigorous that it can only be rendered dormant and lifeless through the very latest gene shear technology. A substance so strong that if a Toyota Corolla body was pressed from a single strand, it could withstand a journey through the center of the sun at the speed of light. A substance so delicate that it could replace the dead neurons and the damaged synapses of troubled humans. Yes, the sanferized kydetic magneto cotton is really the fabric of tomorrow. But it took the genius of Roy and HG to turn the substance into trousers. Self-supporting trousers. The first section of this cassette uh, deals with the evidence on behalf of other people and I would like to thank for letters of support obviously baby John Burgess, Richard Alston, Big Dickie Alston from the Senate has written a terrific note saying all the very best. We'd like to thank the North Coast Women's Collective and their Journey of Discovery team for their magnificent support. We'd like to say thank uh, John Bajorky Peterson, that's Joe's boy. Ding Dong Drysdale has written a beautiful note on some terrific letterhead for us. Uh, Nick from Ernie Sigley's wallet I understand. The Mayor of Lithgow, Johnny Lim sends his regards. Julian Clary's on board thank, saying simply all the best with the AB sainthood job and we'd like to thank the sales team from David's car sales in Charlestown on the uh, new castle area for their magnificent support and Roy thanks for your thoughts as a senior lay cleric in the Church of Cricket but uh, how important are these sightings of St Alan and I believe we can use the term now fully St Alan yeah. uh, of him out and about working with his flock working with the people that we're about to hear now evidence drawn from ordinary people's mm. own observations. Well, uh, I, I think they're very important, given that uh, often ubiquitousness is a quality we associate with uh, beings that are somehow special. Uh, you know, I've, I've looked at the, uh, you know, the, the, the photon going through the double slit experiment, for example, and uh, it's, it's a little beauty. But, <laughs> but to imagine that a, a human can act like a photon of light and be in two places at the same time. And I ask myself, is Alan Border a wave or is he a particle? Or is he both? Now, if he's both, as would seem, as exemplified by what we're going to hear, i.e. people seeing him at the same time in different spots with him doing different things, and it's not as if they're seeing half an A-B, they're seeing the whole bloody thing, uh, then I think this makes for very compelling evidence that our Alan is a special person. We've got John in Brisbane. How are you, John? Oh, very well. How are you, mate? Good, good. Uh, what's your story, John? Oh, yes, I was uh, at Sizzler on um, 
Wednesday afternoon and dining there and Alan Buda just decided to lob up to the table next to us with his kids. Wow. Uh, sizzler. Did he go for the big salad or what? Yes, he, yeah, everyone was having salad. No one was really splashing out in the meal, but um, um, it was only the kids. Now the wife there. Yeah. And uh, how was he getting on with the kids? Because he'd be a bit of a stranger to them. Well, he looked a bit, um, you know, angry with life. Mm. This is not very good, but this is the day after, remember. You've got to give a bloke a, a bit of grace. You know, obviously, things at home, he's been on his mind, he's been thinking about mm. Captain C, should I, shouldn't I? Mm. First day, he's got freedom. Obviously, it's his turn to take the kids to Sizzler. Yeah. Get them out of the house for a while while Jane can do some cleaning. Let's job face it, job kid, one. Job one. On kids the, to Sizzler. That's right, on the chalkboard on the fridge. Must yeah. have been his cooking night or something. Well, I was thinking, you know, you, you're asking a bit, you know, for a bloke who's just obviously given up, you know, what he, the only thing he knows in life, that is playing cricket and touring the world. Part of him died. And part of him died. Yeah, that's right, part of him died. And the fact that no one in Australia noticed it. For how long was he there, John? Well, I was, I was there for about an hour, and he was there throughout the entire time, and... Um did people come up and pat him on the back and say, well done, Alan, love your work, love your show, you've gone too early, things like well, that? Well, no. No, uh, people gave him a wide berth. Well, I suppose they would. You know, he gives off a lot of... Negative vibes. Yeah. Or vibes. Negative vibes, yeah. You and always, vibes. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be just as A, B. Ooh, cool. Ooh, yeah, I, was, <laughs> I was deciding whether to go up and say, look, hi, Alan, you know, I'm really, really... Uh, I, I'm with you, man. Yeah, man, I'm with you. But I, was, I sort of thought better of it. Yeah. Oh, I understand. You might have got a... One to go on with. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Frog marched out of Sizzler by yes. AB. Indeed, it wouldn't be a happy sight, especially if your mates saw you coming out with AB with a boot at your date. Yeah, Thanks, right. John. Good right. on you, John. Richard, uh, Richard, you were in the cab. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's right, Roy. I um, was driving a cab out at um, Brisbane Airport. It would have been about uh, two days after the last test in Adelaide and uh, pulled up on the rank there and there's um, AB and his... Um, Australian striped blazer and all his gear and uh, his wife and a couple of the kiddies there all, all ready to go home. Right, and did you get out and open the boot? Oh yeah, well luckily I, I was driving a wagon that day and that, that's about all he would have fitted all his gear in. So, uh, oh, does he have a lot, does he? Oh yeah, he had um, had all the suitcases and that sort of thing and he had this... Um, couple of coffins with cricket gear in them? Well yeah, yeah, that's right, that's just about what it was there too. Um, yeah. And was, he, was it all chat over to his place? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Where, where did uh, where did they uh, where did they all sit, Richard? Uh, well, AB sat out the front with you, and um, Mrs. Um, Mrs. AB was in in the back with one of the little kitties. What? Directly behind Alan or directly behind you? No, directly behind AB. Right. And um, one of the little kitties sat in the middle, and and Dean sort of sat directly behind me. Right. And did AB spend much time talking to Mrs. AB? Oh yeah, they just we we just sort of chatted in general, and you know she yeah, she added a little comment here and there, and you know young Dean, he's um oh. he seems to be a bit of a personality. He, he added his opinion on on a few different things about selection and that sort of thing. Right? So, Did AB have to turn around every now and again and say, Dean, shut up? Yeah, well, it sounds like he might listen to you guys a little bit because <laughs> he thinks a couple of the guys are a bit of a joke. So, who did uh, who did he think was a joke? Simo. Um, yeah, well, I don't think, yeah, yeah, Simo's name, sort of, um, if you mention him, it, it brings silence more than anything, so yeah. you just sort of, uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 did yeah, you mention yeah, that to him at all, Richard? professional. Did yeah, you say, yeah. how's Simo getting on? Yeah, well, um, I think his name sort of came up in passing, but, uh, yeah, I, had, I, I wasn't going to ask him anything about the obvious things, and then you sort of sit there and think, well, what can you talk about? Oh, yeah. well, talk about the yeah. obvious things. So as soon as Simo was, was mentioned, sort of uh, icicles <laughs> appeared on his beard. Yeah, you know? yeah, you can just sort of, um, yeah, I think Jane might have even mentioned, or maybe even Dean or something, something about, you know, we're talking about what, who's going on, on tours and, you know, about who should um, who should be captain and, and those sorts of things. And I, I think somehow Simo's name came up and sort of, you know, you sort of uh, a bit of a pause and then you sort of think, oh, well, gee, this traffic's bad sort of thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Look, j just going back to the names Dean mentioned that should have been mm. weeded out of the team, can you remember who they were? Um, well, I, I, I don't think they're, they're sort of a great fan of Mark Taylor's um, one-day ability. Oh, well, um, no, neither am I. Yeah, yeah when, when we I've mentioned... Been with Dean on that. Yeah, when we mentioned the uh, the captaincy, it was sort of um, you know well, I I sort of thought you know I thought well I'll put in my two cents worth and uh, I, I thought Ian Healy should be in there because uh, out of the candidates, he's about the only guy that that isn't sort of on the chopping block every now and then as um, far what, as form goes. What did AB? Think well, he, he sort of you know he, he's you know he's sort of fairly diplomatic, but um, he he did make the comment that he thought um, Taylor's um, form is a bit up and down in the one days, and he sort of said um, basically said. 
he lacked a bit of a bit of go in the batting that he doesn't get out there and, and get runs quickly. So. Yes, a bit so. like A B himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but um, I, I think one of the one of the things. Well, I, I would have bet money this week that that A B was not going to retire from what he said to me. Yeah. And I, I, I go along with the people who are saying that. Well, he's been um, pushed. Oh, for sure. Simo pushed him. Yeah, it's an Australian tradition, though. Isn't yeah, it, it is. To, to to get rid of our you know our, our top players, they they come towards their use by date, and uh, the, yeah. the administrators who, you know, I mean, it's like Arco and Quail, isn't it? They're oh, there yeah. for life. Who elected them? Who, who? Well, who says to them it's the time to go? The faceless men. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Richard, uh, you know he's where AB lives now, obviously, having dropped him off in the yeah, cab. Yeah, yeah. Have you thought of going round and uh, just knocking on the door and saying, G'day, uh, Richard here remember again, AB, remember me? <laughs> uh, I just want to say I know where you're coming from, man, and... And uh, all the best. Well, I, I, I don't. Know. It's, it's sort of a bit of a, a trek to get up there. I, I think he's, he's picked the house purposely out there at Chapel, Chapel Hill. It's sort of a bit of a zigzag it, driveway, and the house is set back type thing. So, yeah. a bit oh. of privacy in that. But I, I'd, I'd certainly, if I was in the area, leave a note in his letterbox, a note of support, saying, "Well, you know, we're, yeah. we're all behind you." You know, the, we know what happened. Well, Richard, uh, Richard thanks, thanks, thanks a lot. For that. That's fantastic very, insights. Very, very interesting. Very interesting thoughts, and Richard. And out exactly what Roy and I've been saying for years. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep an eye out in the taxi for oh, any yes, more. Oh, yes, Roy, you never know. You never know. Yeah. You'll see Rachel Hunter in there next. <laughs> yeah, and Rod. <laughs> yeah. Rod, yes. Thanks, Richard. Righto, guys. Now we've got Glenn in Brisbane. How are you, Glenn? Not bad, Roy. How yes, are you? Yeah, good, mate. Where'd you see him? Uh, Monday at Indra Pilly Shopping Town. Oh, oh, yes, the hardware section? No, the yeah. paper shop, actually. Right. He was um, carrying a roller hose. I was just wondering what he was going to do with that. I thought he'd... Oh, he'd been to the hardware store? Yes, he obviously had. There's a... And a roller nylex under the arm? Yeah. And he was ducking into the paper shop to see the, how, how they were reporting this? Yeah. He's going yeah. to hang himself. <laughs> roller nylex, never been done before. <laughs> the day before. You saw him the day before he made the announcement. Yep, yep, did, no kids, just the missus. Did he look jittery at all? Did he look as though he had something on his mind? Yeah, not happy, not garden? happy. He's very yeah. dodgy looking. He wasn't pleased at all. He could... Look, giving everyone quite evil looks. Yeah. Well, he'd been unshaven at that stage, Yes, too. he was, too, yeah. Because he didn't shave until the Wednesday. Ah, yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, the Tuesday, I think. No, the Wednesday, I think it was, that he had the shave. Yeah. Uh, so, did you see what sort of paper he was? Did he get the Courier Mail or one? No, I think he had magazines. Oh, right, uh, something to read. Inside, was, inside Sport? Yeah, probably uh, Woman's Day or, or something. Something to read while Inside he's Edge, that's yeah. the one. Inside yeah. Edge, yeah. Something to read while he's watering the garden. Yeah. Yeah, that Nilex, was it... Uh, green? The, the, yeah, obviously no, it was green. the black. It was the stuff you oh, lay on black. the ground. Maybe he's putting in a, a system. A reticulation yeah, system. Yeah, yeah, that's right, exactly. Yeah. He'd be putting in a reticulation system. <laughs> Bunning style. <laughs> yes, that's one for the West Australian buffs. Well, that is very interesting, Glenn. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Roy. Okay, all thanks. the best. Bye. Uh, Who's next, Roy? We've got Daryl in Panania. How are you, Daryl? Uh, fine, Roy. Now, when did you see him? Just prior to Christmas, Roy. I was um, over at Westfield shopping centre at Hurstville, yes. turned the corner and there was AB signing his, his new book. Beyond oh, 10, Beyond 10,000. Absolutely. Huge crowd of people. Mm. Stack a book two, three metres tall. Did you queue up? I did. Mm. And I felt he was really a man of the masses. I, I actually bought a Steve Waugh book. Steve's from Panania. Yeah. For my son, Steve Waugh's Ashes Diary. And he signed it to James Merry Christmas. Oh, Did he really? Tremendous. There wouldn't be many of them around. An AB signed Steve War book. Well, the forwards by Shane Moore. I mean, it's powerful literary work. <laughs> You've got the big three in one. How would you feel about Steve War booting on as captain? We'd I love think, it. I We'd think love that, it. I think that that's a, a, you know a surprise. Mm. I think it's got something about the future about it. Yeah, it's got it has. something of the continuation of the old, the old, uh, you know, the old days and the new. And I mm. think that uh, that would be a good uh, middle path. Well, Steve the beautiful Moore's captain. The good thing is that they're twins. If one dropped off, you could trick the foreigners. Yes, that's true with Mark. Yep. Going out there. Mark and, uh, goes out for the toss. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> 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 bit, don't tell me they haven't thought of that either, <laughs> because they have. Now, My, uh, I don't think Panani has ever had a captain of uh, Australia? Cre- Australia, have you? No. no. I mean, Steve and Mark didn't even make school captain. Oh, no, ooh, that, is, that, is, that is interesting. Now, did you get a chance? I know there were millions of people there, but did you get a chance to send a, give a personal message to AB at all while you were there? Well, he was in, in between the first and second leg of that South African tour. Yeah. Um, I said, look, all the best. He, did, he looked like he had a few more years in front of him. No, of course oh, he did. I did. Of course he did. It's, look, I've had a look at the x-rays. I think he's got another 15 years in front of him. Did he, did There's he, no problem uh, at all with anything. Did he smile at all, Daryl? Absolutely. Yeah. Always on top of it. A man, no wonder he was Australian of the year. That's and true. The, the People way forget that. The way they've treated him.
Yes. It's just, it's disgusting. Yeah, yeah. and do you, like us, blame Simo in this? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, of course. I mean, the, it, uh, what can you say? I mean, no, I'm you're, like, you're, you're like the nation. You're speechless. You're speechless. I mean, Alan Board has given us so much, and Simo has sat in the shade all those years. <laughs> and pulled and the strings, trying to get the strings. <laughs> yeah, with the odd coconut <laughs> dropping on his head to wake him up. <laughs> and he just, every so often he just comes out with these stupid statements, and he looks silly. He <laughs> oh, is silly. He's silly. He's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Look, I'm, I'm glad I was able to speak on this matter. I mean, I, I'm deeply moved by the fact he's no longer with us. Yes, you've obviously had this bottled up ever well, since Monday. Well, my son said to me the other morning on the way to school, Dad, I've got a book signed by him. Yeah, so he'll never did forget he really? him. Never forget him. Well, Look, I, I agree with you, Daryl. I, I don't know how many kiddies have bumped into me in this last week and said, uh, you know, Roy, where do we go from here? What, who are we to believe in when someone like Alan is given the dump and someone like Simo is allowed to stay? I've had kitty after kitty after kitty with yeah. teary eyes uh, just kicking cans around streets, just lost... Yeah. They don't well, know what's happening to their world. The game is now smaller than Simo. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> my, my, you know, you need a microscope to see it. <laughs> exactly. I'd say the only thing on the upside is the possibility of one of the wars from Panania becoming captain. Mm. And I will say this was, I was, I was at a, a do yesterday where they sold an AB hat. Mm. It had been signed by AB, of course, Alan Border was written on the brim. And uh, it went for about a grand. And uh, I bet you that if, if AB was still captain, at least the, the people in the room remembered it, if yeah. AB mm. was still captain, it probably would have only sold for $50. Yeah. But they knew there'd be no more coming down. Yeah. No. So people wanted a little bit of history and were yeah. prepared to pay for it. Yes. Uh, it's an ill wind that blows nobody any good, but uh, it is sad to Look. see him dealt a, such a dud set of cards. Absolutely. If, if we as, as a nation of people, HG, could sell memories of AB to the world, mm. this country would, would stand alone. Mm. It would be the on top well, of the OECD. On, on, indeed, mm. indeed. So many memories has that man given. And us. it would have been an example to show to Asia. Oh, yeah, we look after yes, our yes, yes. Don't be surprised. To, you know, don't be surprised if next week he's not captaining the Indonesian A, because that could happen. <laughs> you know, he could lose it. We could lose him. And forever. I wouldn't blame him. No, exactly. I wouldn't blame him. He's after the I'd big say dollar now. All the best. Yeah. Good yeah. luck with a new career, yeah, AB. That's right. Absolutely. Okay, thanks for Thank this, Thank you very much. Yeah, well... Gee, you, people you, are taking it gee, personally, Roy. No, he, and he's not alone either. Yeah, no, no, it's good. He's still yeah. on the line. I know, I know. Yeah, we better go to Alan. How are you, Alan? Oh, I'm good, mate, yeah. Are you uh, still upset, Alan? Oh, I'm pretty shaken by it, yeah. Yes, how are the sedatives going, Alan? Are they doing the trick? Oh, well, uh, luckily I'm a medical student, so I've got as many sedatives as I can handle. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, good. That... You've got access to the medicine cabinet <laughs> there, have you? Well, that's tremendous. <laughs> I've got it open now. Yeah, yes, well, you, you would do. Yeah. Uh, writing out prescriptions for mates and then, you know, taking them back. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, Alan, uh, when did you see uh, AB? Um, I, well, it wasn't me. It was a, uh, the guy who I worked with at Pizza Hut. Um, <laughs> AB's place is um, in our delivery area. Yeah. And uh, once he realised uh, um, that it was AB's docket that he was taking up there, mm. he uh, started getting a bit nervous. Well, yeah. he would. Was it a, a Supreme or what? Um... I'm not really sure, actually. I think he normally goes to supers, so you put a bit more on Super Supreme. Yeah. Well, the thick and crunchy or the fat and stupid? Which <laughs> <coughs> oh, I couldn't really tell you. It's yeah. a bit of a secret, that. Does one. he ring up often and get home-delivered pizza? Yeah, yeah. It's happened a few times. A few mm. of the guys have been. Oh, I haven't been yet, but, uh, you know, just biding my time. Couldn't two of you have gone? Sorry? Couldn't the two of you have gone? No, no. <laughs> oh, I tried. But, uh, Do you get uh, autographed boxes, you know, bring them back and stick them up on the wall? You know, things like Wayne Goss, uh, all the best Pizza Hut, Wayne Goss, Carl yeah. Rackerman, you know, uh, Ian Ch uh, Greg Chappell, yeah. you know, people like that. Do you, have you got a collection of autographed Pizza box, Pizza Hut boxes in there? Well, we've got most of the Broncos team. Oh, you would. Oh, you would. Do yeah. you make a Let's Go Broncos pizza? Uh, no, not yet. I think but we there used is, to. there I is one. Oh, I used to. Oh. Mm, it's gone by the board. Yeah. Well, what did your mate say about his visit to well, um, Alan? Yeah, this is this is the thing. Um, you're saying AB was pretty shaken. and uh, my friend went up there. He was he was nervous as anything. Yeah. What day was this again? This was Tuesday. Oh, the day. The, mm. the actual day itself. Yeah. Mm. And um, he he got up there and you know shaking a bit. Took some money out to give AB his change and obviously dropped a bit on the floor because he was so nervous. Yeah, and uh, AB simply said, heads. Oh! <laughs> oh! 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 Very funny. Oh, I mean, oh, how calm is he? I mean, oh, yeah. Oh, tremendous. Very, you know, great mind, great face. Still got the reflexes. Yeah, yeah. obviously. Yeah. yeah. If you threw the pizza to him, all of a sudden he'd catch it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. You know, no problems at all. No. If you threw a piece of salami off it, he'd still catch it. Yeah. If you threw a, threw a, uh, yeah. a caper, yeah. he'd still catch it. Wouldn't matter. Yeah. And he could probably throw the stumps down at the end of the drive <laughs> too, with a caper. <laughs> Well, and isn't that exciting? Yeah, isn't that great? He said heads. Now, yeah. what worries me, though, is it appears that they're only eating fast food in his house. Well, because Sizzler, Sizzler Pizza, Hut. Pizza Hut. Yeah, we were, we were kind of working on a fast food depression theory. Oh, oh. Well, it would be, yes, yeah. yes. I can see that working, yeah. 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 Is that common in the medical caper? You know, people eat a lot of fast food when they're depressed? Well, uh, I, I couldn't tell you. I think we study fast food depression in year four. Right. right. <laughs> you haven't got there yet. Yeah, it's, it's down the track. Yeah. Right. Well, well that's, that's, that, that is great. But you've got to remember that A, B has lived on tour for a long time. Right. Oh, yeah. And on tour, you would be eating a lot of that sort of stuff. Well, um, the, one of the guys who took a, a one before, because he's a bit of a regular customer, mm. he, um, he, he took it to him on the day of the first test. And uh, really, I think we should have sent him some dietary advice. You know, he's yeah. playing the game. He's eating greasy food. I, I can't understand uh, it. Yeah. Mind you, you know, AB... Cast iron constitution. Well, maybe that's part of the uh, AB uh, success story. Yeah, you can eat anything and <laughs> can play. Can eat anything and play. Oh, yeah. I was expecting the board to slip through his hands. Oh, yeah. well, yeah. 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 Well, that's a great memory. Give our regards to you, mate, uh, who delivered the pizza. Will do. Thanks, Thanks for that, Alan. Thanks very that's much. That's great, Alan. All the best with the studies. Uh, now we've got Greg in Brisbane as well. How are you, Greg? Good, thanks, Roy. You just interrupted me mid-race, mate. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting on the last in Brisbane. It's all right. Yeah, it's OK. I've, you know, I've, I've backed upwards. Mick Dipman, so How's it's Mick all right. How's today? How's hey? Mick gone today? You got the first up, I know. Yeah, I know. I backed all our mob in the um, 10,000. Oh, it's finished second. Yeah, Flitter pipped me at the post. Oh, That's yes. Mm. Yeah. Good win by Flitter, though. Time, nicely timed run by Jimmy Cassidy. But how's yeah. Mick gone with his book of rides at Doombin today? Has he got many home? I think he's got a car. I think he's got a double already, so hopefully he'll win the last for me. Oh, yeah. right, all the best with yeah. that, Greg. Just before yeah. the race goes, uh, wh when did you see AB? Um, during the week with his mate on the golf course, you know, when they were... Oh, they on the from Channel yeah. 7. Oh, on the actual day on Tuesday. Yeah, well, yeah. take us through it, uh, Greg, and take your time about it. Oh, no, listen, um, it was, um, there was always camp, like, me and my uncle usually go and have a game at Indrapilly. Mm. Yes. I think his mate's a member there. Yeah, yeah that'd be right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not far from the Channel 7 studios in Mount Cutha. Yeah. And, um, and we were on about the third or fourth, I think, and all of a sudden, my uncle said, what's, what's all these cameras around the place? There was all this Channel 7 gear and that. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it was AB and his mate on the... I think they were teeing off, you know, at the beginning there, and there was all this, you know, sort of, you know, lights and everything. I thought, oh, don't tell me AB's retired. And yeah. blow, me, blow me down, you know, later on that night, AB and his mate, exclusive. But hang on, I, I was given to understand it was during the course of the, uh, the golf game with his mate that AB decided to pull the pin, but no, by the sounds no, of what no, you're saying, all... AB knew before yeah, the yeah, first it hole. All, it was all rearranged, so his mate got the exclusive, you know? Exclusive golf game, exclusive interview. Oh, ah. is that right? Now, now, was it in the clubhouse then that Channel 7 organised that set? No, that was back at his mate's place at a barbie after the game of golf. So well, what, was the seven, and everything. Well, what was the seven crew doing at the golf match? They filmed it on the they, off they, they filmed. They were filming AB and his mate playing golf. You know, a little just a pickup yeah, shot. Yeah. You know, you, yeah. you know how AB likes playing. So sort of as if to say, oh, this is what AB will be doing from now on. Yeah, He's playing golf. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, so how did AB look? And and more importantly, how did his mate look? <laughs> oh, he's, oh, he's, his mate's a bit of a hacker. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's not not very good at golf at all. But um, AB, I, th I, I think last week someone said he was. Wearing a pair of shocking red trousers. He was wearing them on the course. Yes, Whoa, that'd, be right. that'd be right, yeah. So I think he might have been, when, when that other bloke saw him last week, he might have been out having a hit before he went and had, some, had a bite at that restaurant, whatever. So. Oh, Sizzler. Mm, oh, whatever, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so did you see AB strike the ball at all? Oh, beautiful, Roy. Beautiful. As if he was, oh, I guess I guess golf, golf and cricket are different games, but he still... He, I reckon he should take up golf. Yeah, yeah, listen, does he punch the ball like he punched the punched a, a drive? No, no, it's all, sort of more like a um, loft over over straight hit sort of thing. Oh, yeah, all right. Six. Does he keep the left arm stiff like he did when he was hooking the ball? Yeah, he does. He's he's very accomplished golfer. Yeah. Yeah, he dresses the ball well and. No, oh, he's, he's he's got all he's got all the trip, you know. And does he have the gear, you know, the clocks on the socks and the plus fours and the funny pants, <laughs> the, and one the, the, the one glove, yeah, the one glove and all that sort of. I, I, he had the glove, but I think it was on the wrong hand. I think oh, that'd be AB. If you're a left hander, you're supposed to have on your right hand. That's right. Left hand. Oh, so, AB, you know, AB, AB, all over. Yeah. Greg, did you say anything to him? No, I didn't. I he was, as I say, he was a few he's a few holes behind us. We could sort of see through the, you know, through the fairway, and yeah. sort of we thought, oh well, we might as well, you know, that, that's enough. We've seen AB. It looks like he's retired and. 
as I say, it was on the news that night. And, and Greg, just right. just as a personal point, I know the race starts quickly soon for you, Greg. <laughs> how, how did you how did you feel? Um, oh, I, I was shattered, mate. I was shattered. Like I've grown up with AB. You know, I'm. You know, I remember ten years ago. I, I just finished school actually when we were down the coast at schoolies week. I remember Kim Hughes yeah. coming off the off the ground crying on and, the blub. Yeah. Oh, you know, our mates we were all there. You know, paying out on him, saying, "Bring." You know, bring on A B, he'll do better and yeah. and he has. No, it was it was good. It was good. Yeah, he was good, yeah. He, and Greg, he, he was good. You could put that on his gravestone, you know. <laughs> I think so. A B, he was good. <laughs> and Greg, uh, what did you like in the last? Uh, you were on Up, upwards. Upwards, how'd yes. it go? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I haven't got a result through on upwards. Oh uh, uh, well I'll, yes. I'll, I'll What are the odds there? Well, upwards was quite uh, long in the odds, I, I think. I think it was about twelve to one, I hope. Twelve to one mm. at the moment, yeah, listed with sub zero, Lady Lady Abstain, Oliver Nain and upwards at twelve to one. Yeah, so yeah, let's hope so... Mick Dickman did get it home but it's the sort of thing you remember for the rest of your life you know seeing ab on that uh, golf course yeah on that day it'll be like you know the first time you saw a two dollar coin yeah. or something like yeah, that yeah you know, everyone sort of remembers it. whenever something you, listen greg you hold on to your memory mate keep it clear because <laughs> they'll do a documentary on you in years to come you were the one you were one of the ones to see him on the last day maybe if i had it like that and this is your life ab could come on and say you know i I saw you on, on your last day at the golf course. Yes. Well, that'd be tremendous. Right. <laughs> yes. yes, that'd be great. And when, of course, you know, when, of course, the film is made, somebody like Jack Thompson will play you. So it's something to look forward to. <laughs> I was having more like a Dita Brummer. Oh, Dita oh, Brummer, yes. 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 well, you're in there. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Greg, thanks very okay, much for this. OK, cheers, hey, And all the best thanks, with your Roy. golf. Yeah, mate, thank you. Bye-bye. See, See you, Greg. Greg. Weren't they magnificent sightings, Roy? <laughs> yes, uh, Absolutely first-class and well-worthy. And could I say this, you know, we don't like to blow our own trumpet here no. that often, but I think we did AB justice in the yeah. way that the papers haven't, no, in the way sure. that the television haven't, in the way that the radio hasn't, because we talk to real people, yeah. seeing AB doing ordinary things yeah. in that week that he will never forget and that most of us will never forget. No, that's right, because AB is worth remembering. Roy Slaven has returned to his butchering roots and emerged with a whole new range of cuts specifically designed for the palate of the 90s. How about wandering into your nearest registered Slaven butchery and ordering the following? Coit flaps, box mints and stretched pistol strips. Roy, still doing things with meat other butchers only dream of. Well, thanks very much for turning the cassette over and welcome back to side two of the plea, the quest the important work that Roy and I are undertaking with the cassette, that is, the attempt to draw Rome's attention to the good deeds that Alan Border has laid aside, has stored up during his life in front of the stumps and now throughout his retirement. Uh, and uh, there's some very, very fine thoughts on AB's retirement and how he is spending his days now and uh, also how we should remember AB and what sort of images and symbols we should be thinking of when it comes to the memory of this great saint, the first saint of cricket, St AB. Roy, I know you've got a lot of interesting ideas about the uh, celebratory side of St Alan. Mm. Do you think we should have a feast day, an AB day, mm. uh, or is a simple recognition mm. that St Alan will become the patron saint of cricket and a lot of else mm. uh, enough. Mm. No, I don't think it is enough. I, I think there should be a day a day off for everyone just to, uh, with a proviso, that on that day off, let's say it's the 3rd of September, just for argument's sake, that's just off, just off the top it's of my very head. very good day, Roy. It's a lovely day. On the 3rd of September, no matter what day it is, whether it's Monday, Tuesday, etc., etc., everyone has it off, but everyone thinks about AB. Uh, everyone tells AB stories... Uh, every television channel just shows different innings of AB, uh, a little bit of perhaps of AB bowling, some terrific catches he's made, and it just turns into an Allen Border Festival Day. I, I, I think that's mandatory. I, I, I think that's got to happen, and I think that would be terrific. And, and you know, uh, the more I think of it, the more compelling it is. Uh, it's just a, a funny little story that, uh, that Keith Miller told me the other day that uh, Keith had woken up with a howler of a hangover. <laughs> no surprise there, Roy. Really. <laughs> well, you know how Keith is. He, he's larger than life. And uh, he was, you know, he said his eyes were blurry. He couldn't, you know, he, he couldn't, you know, pick Norman May from a telegraph post. And uh, <laughs> mind you, he's not alone in that quest. <laughs> anyway, he had a blinding hangover and uh, he'd been, you know, doing a bit of whittling as he does with uh, a standing knife and cut himself, slashed himself across the, uh, the heel of the, uh, of the thumb very, very badly. And uh, he uh, went up and saw AB. AB had retired. Now I'm talking about oh, you know, what, what it's like in retirement. And uh, he shook hands with AB. And AB uh, 
offered his left hand, not his right, to shake hands with. And, uh, <laughs> you know, how Keith is, he thought he might have been a mason or something like that. But uh, did what Alan suggested and shook with the left hand. And after talking, went back into the bar and looked down and the cut was gone. Yeah. The cut was gone oh, and the hangover that. was gone. What? And that's the first time that Keith can remember not, having a, not being in a, a hangover sort of mode for 50 years. Roy, just before we go to these thoughts on the cassette, mm. I'm just wondering if the merchandising of Alan Border, that is St Alan, will cheapen, cheapen the whole memory. Oh, I'd like to see a, one of those luminous bloody car dolls. Yes. You know, St Christopher's gone by the board. Or, or young cricketers have a little AB token around their necks or dangling off their bats or mm. dangling off their boxes mm. just to protect that area. Are you at all frightened that some of the more spectacular forms of merchandising that we've seen associated with saints could come into play? I mean, you know, mm. without wishing to offend anybody, listening to the cassette, you know, is mm. there a thought that AB stools might be on sale uh, mm. at various religious uh, Well, I know. I'd like, I'd like a few of his stools in my garden. <laughs> the King Tide Sleepmaker is so successful, you can't wake up. When Roy and HG were first alerted to this problem, they didn't know what to do. But with the CSIRO's help, this problem is history. All fish in the King Tide Sleepmaker are now programmed to massage your softer protuberances at an hour you predetermine, so that now you can come to in the nicest possible way. Before you drop off, all you have to say is, Honey, have you set the fish? It's new. It's racy. It's a game for viewers. It's the Sporting Sheets. You simply correctly guess the couple under the sheets and win a trip to Rio for Carnavali. Is it A, Balmain Tiger Paul Sirenen and West Coast Eagle Carl Langdon? B, Alan Border and the War Twins? C, Supermodel Elle McPherson and Handbrake Harry White? Or D, Bert Newton and Jeff Fennick? Send your entry to the Sporting Sheets, Post Office Box 9994 in your capital city. Girls, you've loved their work on the paddock, but you can't get them to come across after the full-time siren sounds. Why not spend a three-night intensive with Roy and HG and guest lecturers Noel and Les Cleal and learn how the sports stars like it? This course is not available at TAFEs or universities and is simply called Crack Onto a Cricketer. Learn what to say and when to say it. Learn what faces to pull when it comes to your turn to talk and what to do with your lips while they rabbit on and on about past digs. Graduates from this course in previous years are now happily married to Merv Hughes, Stumpy Boone, Terry Alderman and David Hooks and we are pleased to announce the engagement of Shane Warne to one of our most recent graduates. Just look in the local paper for details. Roy, how's he spending his retirement? Well, he's fixed the fence. Yes, he's, he's done the fence? He's done the fence. There are a few palings missing. He's fixed those, fixed those how's up. How's the car going? Has he had a chance to get onto the car? Yes, he has, yeah. It's, he's got the vacuum cleaner out. He's vacuumed it all out very, very nicely. He's put that armour all gear on the, on oh, the dash. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, he's put some of that Spitfire gear down the carburetor and uh, and cleaned, uh, cleaned the motor out that way. Uh, he's done the chrome. It looks very, 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 very attractive. Uh, a, a, he's, he's used that cutting compound. Remember it, those those stains that were on the bonnet? They're gone. Hmm. Uh, the cutting comp compound, I think, was a number two. Tore that out, and uh, he's, he's pulled it up. Got a nice gloss on it. Uh, he got the drill out and got the you know that bit you could put on the drill. Lambs wool, uh, yeah, the lambs spinner. wool, and he's got a lambs wool glove that he just rubs you know around the fenders uh, very sort of sensually. He's, he's got that looking good. Uh, there was a bit of trouble with the, one of the uh, with, with the guttering from yeah. memory. Too much leaf. Yeah, I has he gone down the downpipe? Well, the leaf guards. He's got yeah, a problem with the leaf guards. Guard. He, he, luckily, I think he's uh, he's tweaked. Uh, there's a new leaf guard been invented. Uh, which AB's installed, and it's looking very good and working, working very, very efficiently, so, so that's good to see. He's used the colour bond, of course, so he doesn't have to paint it. Uh, so he's, been, the he's done pruning, you know, yes. you know, the lemon tree that was in trouble oh, at the yeah, back? Yeah, yeah. Well, he's got that fixed up. Uh, he cut out all the dead, and uh, he's put a bit of urine around it, his own, 
and uh, the nitrogen has uh, brought back the lemons uh, beautifully. So as soon as I can tell, they're going very, very well. Had two questions. Uh, the list of jobs on the fridge door, is, is, is it I think he's working his way through. He's working he's his, way, his through. way through. And is he happy in his work? You know, do you know what I mean? Is he, is he sort of comfortable with this sort of lifestyle of yeah. just hanging about the house and doing the jobs as they come up on the, on Look, the fridge door? Look, I, I think so. We, we had that reporting of a sighting of AB at the tool shop. Yeah, the hardware recall. store. The hardware store. Yes. Uh, I think he's installing that reticulation system. Oh, so he doesn't have to water. So he doesn't have to water. Oh, well, you can, but you can get a timer. Ah, uh, yeah. And you just got to, you know, turn it on and the timer does the rest, you know, might blow it for 15 minutes and then stop, you know, any given time of the day you want it, usually dawn I think is when AB likes to water um, and he's got that black flex yeah, going, going all around. Bunning style. Bunning style. Bunning style yeah. with, uh, with the little nipples you, you, that you clip into them yeah. works very, very nicely uh, so he's got that new Makita drill uh, the cordless that he always mm. wanted because he's mm. got bored with having to uh, put the extension, put the extension cords yeah, so that you can, it. yeah uh, so the power out. That's right, that's right. So I, I, I think he's doing a lot of things that... Uh, see, AB missed out on a lot, you know, we think when kiddies and older kiddies think of AB, they think, oh, the glamour, you know, always playing cricket, always going playing world, cricket, going around corner. the world, playing cricket and going around the world again playing and playing cricket. cricket and coming home and playing cricket and off you go again and playing cricket for bloody how many years? Nearly 20 years. Mm. He missed out on a hell of a lot. He missed out on pride in his home, pride in, in his car. In his car, he missed out. Pride on, in his shed. In relationships, mm. uh, there was obviously a, a lot of minuses there. That uh, now the AB family feel they're living with a stranger. Uh, who is this bloke? Who is this bloke? Young the, Dean says. Yeah, who 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 is the mum? Who is this bloke who's working on the who's botching up the guttering? Who, who is this that's, you know, put this reticulation system in that, you know, where the water goes in all the wrong direction? We it keeps a... going over the, you know, neighbour's fences. It doesn't water out our, our bit of paddock. Yeah. You know, who is this bloke that makes me go to the hardware and buy stupid things as if, you know, I've got to pretend I'm interested? There is a downside, I think. He's missed out on a hell of a lot, so he's going to have to run very, very, very hard to catch up on the, on the family and home carousel that left him behind all those years ago. Yes, and, uh, you know, his mental state, Roy, you know, when it comes to uh, training mm. uh, with the Shield team, will he bother to show up or he just come no, I don't think I, I, I don't think he will. And uh, there's just constant visitors. <clears> oh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, people uh, like... R- D- Richie, Tomo. Fat Cat, Richie Fat Cat. and Tomo lobbing yeah. in, you know, with, with a case. Yeah, <laughs> a with, with a, ca- a slab of beer. So, yeah. you know, come, come on, on, come on down from the roof, AB, we're here. Come on, buddy. Yeah, a couple yeah. of videos. You now, know. let's have a look today at the fourth test, 1978. You Remember got that? out for none in both innings. Yeah. Well. <laughs> let's watch that. And uh, trying to relive the uh, those, those old days. And uh, I, I, I think AB's not interested in the mirror. He's interested in looking through the windscreen and pressing the accelerator. At last, from Roy and HG's small arms factory in Kempsey comes a gun for all seasons. The McCracken Fiddler 1250 is precision engineered to the highest international standards. So much so that it can delicately remove the wing of a gnat at 400 metres, but so powerful that it can fell a fully fit male rhino on the charge from almost three kilometres away across the veld. The makers are so confident of the quality of the Fiddler 1250 that they claim, if you can see it, it's hit. Anecdotal evidence suggests that with the Fiddler on fully automatic, the human eye simply becomes baggage. That's the McCracken Fiddler 1250, the only gun to put the hootin' back into shootin'. Ladies and gentlemen, this sporting life suggests if you have nothing to do next Tuesday week, why not come along to the Hilton Hotel, room 169, for a night of looking at the Chapel Brothers having sex. Well, a beast, Sandy. Got any rowdy toot left, George? Ah, uh, sorry, love, sold out. Box mints? Last kilo walked out just after ten. God, George, what have you got? I have a lovely rack of fiddle ring bones and a very nice piece of spun cave. Will the cave last through the weekend? Not a problem. Thanks, George. <laughs> There's only one drawback with the House of Meats new cuts for the 90s. You are what you eat. 
Can I change the subject totally and uh, just uh, discuss for a moment, uh, obviously people will be going to Lang Park. Now, not much rugby league's played at Lang Park these days because no. of the ANZ Stadium. In the, the, the crushes are going to move in. <clears> oh, the crushes, yes. Mm. Yes, next year it'll be back uh, as the centre of rugby league in Brisbane. Uh, now, obviously a lot of people go down to, just to have a look at the Wally Lewis statue covered in the the pigeon carpet. Yes. And, there and is, spiders. And spiders. <laughs> It's what, co- redbacks? Yeah, it's just covered in a gossamer now of uh, bird droppings and spiders. But it's, it, it, so it has a sort of interesting patina, <laughs> doesn't it? The only thing missing is rust. But it'll come. come. <laughs> now, there's a lot of talk uh, around Brisbane in particular of uh, some way of, uh, you know, suitably marking AB's departure. And there has been a suggestion that another statue be built, uh, this one of AB, and it's placed alongside King Wally, uh, at the uh, Lang Park. Really? Uh, which uh, I think is a little inappropriate. Gee, that is an interesting thought, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering if this could work, and would it, would AB have to be the statue be the same size as Wall, or would it be lifelike, uh, oh. you know, as Wall's is, of course? Oh. Uh, or, uh, you know, would it be sort of suitably small or just a pocket sort of statue or something? I mean, and shouldn't it be better placed to the Gabba? Or wouldn't it be better placed to the Sydney cricket ground mm. where, uh, you know, obviously AB had a couple of great yeah. knocks? Yeah. Look, I, look, he, he opens a can of worms. It does. He? He's an absolute can of worms. Look, I, uh, I, I think really there's got to be some sort of stylistic consistency here in terms of scale. Yes. I, I, I have vivid memories as a very, very young kitty. And uh, having a, a, a dinky toy and a matchbox toy. Oh, yes. And you couldn't play with both because you had a, say, a dinky mini miner was eight times the size <laughs> of your matchbox truck. Yeah, true. And so it made no sense. No. You know, the world was just weird. Uh, uh, yeah. you know, I mean, it just didn't, didn't compute. Fit. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so you ended up throwing them both away. Now, I, I, I think if we're going to have an Allen border, we've got to be consistent and have it the same scale as the Wally Lewis, yeah. if the Wally Lewis is going to make sense. But we have to ask ourselves whether the mark struck by the Lewis statue is the one for Australia. Uh, yeah, I, I personally point. don't think it's big enough. Yeah. See, I would like to think if we're going to do an AB statue, look, 10 years as captain, uh, you know, 20 years playing the game. 10,000 runs. 11,000. Sorry, runs. yes. Well... Um, I, it, what I, would you say, four times as big? Well, I'd like to think, you know, I know the Earth's curved quite a bit, but I'd like to think if we had a statue, say, in Brisbane... Mm-hmm. You could see it from Mauritius? You could almost see it from Sydney. <laughs> How? Now, well, that's a statue. <coughs> How about Perth? That's a big ask. Yeah. <laughs> it would have to be... Quite a bit bigger. Well, I think it'd poke through the stratosphere. But is there anything I, uh, technically I, wrong or impossible about that? Oh, I suppose not. I suppose not. It, it would have to be. Gee, I, I don't know the. I, I don't know the angles here. Maybe someone of a scientific bent who has a uh, a slide rule in their pocket could uh, could sort this out or has a, access to some log books. But uh, I, I'd imagine that the statue to be seen in Perth from Brisbane would have to be about uh, 150, 180 kilometres high. Well, that would pose. One imagines traffic Some problems for planes, aircraft in the area, so it'd have to have a big bloody light on the top, which is possible. <laughs> but you'd have to, ha- you'd, gee, I don't know, you'd, you'd think, uh, you know, the Discovery would have to be used to lower the head. Yeah. Wouldn't yeah, it? Well, the space I, shuttle. Yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. Well, I to think lower that, the head on. I think it'd be well, terrific that's possible. Use. I think it'd be terrific use of it too. But you'd have to build a bloody bigger shuttle. To fit the head yeah. onto it, to blow it up, to get it up D- there in the first place. Unless yeah. you took it up bit by bit, which is possible. Like the nose one day and yeah. an eyeball half the next the nose. day. Yeah, yeah, half the nose. And then, yeah. But, well, that'd be a lot of but work. But it would be an impressive bloody bit of a year, wouldn't it? Uh, well, maybe they start with Sydney first up and get it up as far as Sydney, say. Obviously, it'll be well, something... one foot at the SCG, <coughs> another foot... At the Gabba. At the Gabba. And the whole well, that's thing. the sort of dimension I think we've got to yeah. look at. Yeah. Do you think the... Queen... Mind you, a statue that bit, I think, could be seen from Leningrad. Is there anything wrong with that? No, I don't think you could see it from there. You'd have to you'd put a mirror. No, nah, you'd, ha- you'd have to put a mirror. Somewhere you'd put a mirror. There. You'd put a mirror somewhere. Yeah, so you could shine it there, back there, the other way, the light. Then you'd have to have it illuminated twenty-four hours a day because the people in Leningrad would see it. No, nah, if the sunlight here with a mirror. Ah, yeah, they could see they it. They could see dark. it in the dark. Yeah. Okay. okay. When it's dark here, they might have a problem. But if we have a big light on it, <laughs> so the planes don't keep <laughs> banging into it. Yeah. You know, Pinatubo style or whatever the... the uh, yeah, I know the, what you mean. You know yeah. what I mean. 
because I think that'll be a disaster, and I don't think AB deserves, you know, to be the, the reason uh, why air, a lot of people have disasters. Yeah, yeah I, I just don't think that's. And right. underneath, would there be a shopping centre under each foot? Would there be a shopping centre, or? Well, I think there'd be opportunities there for merchandising, <laughs> like maybe you could buy cricket bats, <laughs> or books, protectors, <laughs> stories of AB's life, the Beyond Ten Thousand book. You'd imagine yeah. they'd move out of there pretty quickly, wouldn't you? Yeah, and I think people would come. You know, well, people couldn't avoid being there. <laughs> From producers Roy Slaven and H.G. Nelson comes Argentina's first truly supergroup, Hitler's Cock. <laughs> Tracks include Thank Heavens for Little Girls, Night and Day, Happy Talk, Everybody's Talking at Me, and the single that floored South America, Flirt Bitch, It's Me, Hitler's Cock, out now in Asia. <laughs> You've got guests coming round for dinner and you don't know what flowers to buy. This is a bugger of a problem that has frayed many a pre-dinner nerve. The answer is simple. H.G. Nelson's Guide to Flower Arranging, The Slaven Way. Have the tongues wagging when the sherry is served with a wisteria, the port with a phytostrum, or the Wyndham Estate with a waratah. That's H.G.'s Flower Arranging, The Slaven Way. The last word in your night to remember. For the lover of life and for the thinker in the family comes from Roy the cassette, They Simply Call Me Dillip. Spend four hours of high-quality listening as Norman May gently probes arguably India's finest batsman of the late 20th century. With a stirring introduction from Ken Casellas, listen to Dilip Vensaka explain how he started in cricket, how he felt being named the Deloitte's Batsman of the Year in 1990, how he felt the day he first saw Sachin Tendulkar, and whether a cricketer's mind is too close to his body to ever know when to retire with dignity. They simply call me Dilip. $14.99 at Quality Record Outlets. Look, it seems that uh, if the statue would be to only to be seen from Sydney and Brisbane, yeah. it would have to be somewhere between 30 and 80 kilometres tall. Gee, that is a big gap. It is a big though. gap, isn't it? One's based on <clears throat> personal observation by an aviator. The other is worked out by someone with a slide rule using the angle of the earth. So probably closer towards the 80, I'd go with. I reckon I'd go 85. Yeah, to make to be Sydney. sure. <clears throat> yeah. So you'd see the top of his cap. So you'd see the bottom of his chin. Yeah, I think you should be able to see the bottom of his chin. Yeah. Um, the If it's to be seen from Perth, and therefore one imagines Melbourne and Hobart, mm. it uh, it's somewhere between uh, 3,403... <laughs> Kilometres high. The exact measurement. <laughs> and uh, someone suggested 30,000 kilometres. I, I, I 30,000? Yes, I don't think that's quite right. That'd I, be through the ozone layer, wouldn't it? Don't, I don't know how oh, far. No, the ozone layer is only about 30 miles up. 30 oh, right. miles up. Mm. Uh, I'll speak. Uh, I, I think 3,403 kilometres sounds about right. Doesn't it? 0.75, I think. Hmm. Mm. Uh, Roy, so that's a fair statue. Yeah, well, gettable. gettable. Oh, it's gettable. Yeah. It's gettable. Um, gee, you'd see it, from, see it from the moon. Well, the thing is, New Zealand would be able to see it. Of course they could. And then further out... They're constantly reminded of AB's dominance <laughs> in Traz Tasman series for 10 years. And also, uh, you'd see it probably in Fiji. Now, I haven't got my distances uh, right. Is Fiji more than 2,000? You might 2, say Vanuatu. But certainly Vanuatu. Papua yeah. New Guinea would get a good eye for. Yeah, they would. Oh, uh, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? You'd have to go a fair way out. So you've got to go. You've seen it in She'd be good if you could see it, say, in Indonesia. Oh, you see it in Indonesia, parts of Indonesia. Timor. East Timor would see it easy because you've got to remember that 2000, you're getting it from Brisbane to Perth. Yeah. So you draw an arc an on your arc, compass, you yeah. assume all those places. You might yeah. get it out in Tahiti. Gee, wouldn't would that be, be good? City. Wouldn't that be good? You might just see his cap. Yeah, just the top. Just that, the green yeah, baggy. Yeah, that, that, that sort of gumnut thing in the middle of it. <laughs> baggy. The top. That's all you'd see. But then local mm. legend would, you know, grow up about the yeah. baggy green and stuff. Baggy, baggy green, yeah, yeah. Well, that is tremendous. And what... Well, uh, see, that... I... If, if it's 3,403, I don't think that's... Too, I don't think that's too big an ask. Yeah. You'd probably construct it out of steel or aluminium, wouldn't you? Steel, steel frame, box steel, box girders, and aluminium plate. That would be my gut. That'll be my instinct on this one. Uh, with a hell of a lot of cable yeah, holding, holding it. it down. Mm. 
How about Hardy Plank? Could you model that well enough? But remembering, of course, that uh, you know, with a statue that high, that an area that looks round would be totally flat. Do you know what I get? Do you know what I mean? Oh, like yeah, it's got to go around somewhere. Yeah, but what I mean is across the front of the nose would yeah. be about two kilometres long. Or more, wide. More. Should more. I say? more. Yeah. So as you've got a lot of hardy plank could go across yeah. there. Yeah. It would only be when you began and it would yeah. gradually turn. Yeah. might take, uh, you know, two kilometres to turn the... to bend round one side of the nose. Yeah. Do you know and what there I mean? are a couple of other things here, too. If we did get the statue up, it'd be good if it was somehow functional. Like well, people climb up in it. Well, no, 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 no. I always remember A B playing a, a cut. You know that sort of square drive. Mm-hmm. That was the the shot mm-hmm. I'm most familiar. With, that I'll always go to my grave. Or think as soon as A B's mentioned, I'll think of that square drive. Wouldn't it be nice if the statue could move? Well, I think this is far too much. I, I don't believe. You know, I could be proven wrong, but I don't yeah. think technology can move something 3,000, what is it, 403 kilometres high and have it come to attention, you know, like... Oh, no, the legs wouldn't move because his legs didn't move when he no. played that shot. So they're just the top... It's just, just <laughs> it's just the two arms and the bat would move. Yeah. It's a big ask, I know. Yeah. It's a big ask. But would it do it in something like a day? The shot would be completed in a day. Well, you could use it as some some sort of seasonal time. seasonal clock. Um, yeah, you couldn't do it in real maybe, time. Maybe maybe. Well, no. Well, no. I because don't think you got could. Tons and tons and tons. Yes, of stuff I don't think it would move in real time. No, yeah. that would be a, a, a feat. A feat. But if say <laughs> gradually between summer and winter, mm. like closed stance represents summer. <laughs> yes. And the uh. bat up, cocked, ready to go. I don't know. Maybe that's oh, all. I know. That, I see where you're coming from. That's so more, as the seasons yes, go with the following. Yes. Yeah. Can yeah. I suggest another thing, which may in fact solve a number of these problems together? That in fact we uh, commission someone, mm. and I must thank the Courier Mail for ringing and suggesting that the money to build this three thousand four hundred and three kilometre statue will be raised from the subscribers and readers of the Courier Mail. That's very very generous of you. Mm. Uh, but I'm just wanting to remember, it's all Hardy Plank and it's all Australian from mm. uh, Kembla Steel and so on. I'm just wondering if. And, you know, I don't want to put the mocker on the idea of building the Hardy Plank Allen mm. Border 3,000 mm. kilometres high, but could it be done with light? Now, I'm not sure where we're up to with it, but I'm wondering if it's what, possible. a laser? A laser. Oh. A laser Allen Border. But it, I want it all filled in. I just don't want a blippy outline no. on the outside <laughs> with a couple of dots. Yeah. I want to see light. I want to yeah. see a solid AB in light inside the pyjama gear, the yellow duds, the green and yeah. you know, yellow shirt, yeah. you know, you know, do you know what I mean? Can I make a suggestion too that with <laughs> with statues of this type, yeah. that uh, you know the head can look disproportionately small because it's so bloody far away. So we build. Could in. I suggest that it's built in the the era of not quite parallax, but the era of perspective? Yeah, you foreshorten it. Foreshorten it yeah. so that the I, head. So the head. Huge. Doesn't look silly. Yeah, doesn't look like a pinhead up <laughs> no. on three thousand yeah. kilometres up in the yeah. air. Yeah, no, that's yeah. right. That's right. I think you've got to compensate for yeah. it. Yeah, let's face it. The bloke was built pretty close to the ground. That's right. So obviously the bottom part of the statue will be in the illusion of it, right. closer to the ground, <laughs> and the head mm. will obviously be up there. Yeah, and I'd like to see him have an expression on. I want to see him wink. Yeah. Oh, well, Not that he ever did much. No, no. I, Maybe I, a wink's wrong. Yeah. I'd like to Maybe see a the scowl. Grumpy. Yeah, scowl. You know, he's telling uh, you know Craig McDermott. You know, if you don't Just bother do that again, son, you're, you're on, on the, the next plane home. home. Uh, that sort of thing. Yeah. Maybe it could speak. <laughs> what would it talk? <laughs> Just have phrases, stock phrases that AB's famous for, mm. like "get a dog." Yeah. What are you looking at? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Who's next? <laughs> Where's yes. the bun? That's well, all. Um, well, I, well think I think that's I all think fun, but I, 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 I love your uh, the suggestion of it, though, just uh, a painting, a sculpture in light. Yeah, I think, that, I think that's the modern way. A sculpture in light. But we'd have to get uh, access to... It'd be an intergovernmental thing because you'd have to have one of the, one of the guns, the light guns, yeah. say, Vanuatu. Oh, I one see what you mean. in yeah. Auckland. Yeah, and they'd be projecting up. Projecting up. Over the One in New room. Guinea. yeah. Yeah, and they'd all have different colours. And they'd it'd... all have different colours, mm. and it'd all just fuse. But wouldn't it be good, just no matter where you are, you always, and you always know where you are, because you're relative always to AB. That's right. If you're stuck in the desert. Where the bloody hell is East? <laughs> hey! Thanks, AB. <laughs>
Now, what would happen if a cloud... AB saves another group. Yeah. And what happens if a cloud's over? Oh, you know, like in Brisbane. Oh, well, that'd be in any scouts, in any, you know, people who go on those explorers. No, tours, I just meant, does that create a seating problem? Number one rule, wait Look, till sunny day. To see AB. Yeah. And head home. And head home. Uh, could the um, could the thing work? Uh, you know, could could the if we had the sculptor in light, mm. would it be able to be? Obviously, it would be difficult in the daytime to run it, but every night yeah. it would come on. Yeah. And once you switch the uh, cannons on, mm. would it be possible, even if it was uh, overcast, to, to get an effect? I think you'd see something a smudge, something like that. But if it is in light, it could it could play the uh, the square drive in real time. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's, and, why, that's where I got the idea And the from. hook shot. Oh, all that. Hologram style. And maybe roll the arm over, yeah. as he did. Yeah. And talk. But wouldn't that be great? Because you'd have the illusion, say, if you were at Alice Springs, of the back coming out and going over your head. <laughs> <laughs> if he played a pull shot. Yeah. yeah. It depends which way he's facing. Well, I reckon we rotate. We could have him facing out to into Pacific. the Pacific. Yeah. You know, bludgeoning the ball straight back. You know, yeah, to towards, the other end of the world. Yeah, San Francisco. Yeah. Rather than hitting it towards Perth. Uh, Mind you, I think I like seeing him front on. Well, I think... I don't think, you know, terrific bloke and... Australia and shouldn't very be seen, attractive, but seen bum on. No. No, they shouldn't. I think that would be an insult. Yeah. yeah. Let's just insult the people of Vanuatu. And, and Tahiti. Tahiti and, by having a big know, date. Mulawala. Big A-B date. Just pointing right pointing at Pointing at them. Grinning. Uh, on the other side. <laughs> yeah. In response to the overwhelming success of Australian birds Roy and HG have shot comes the Book of Whoops, 117 full-colour photos of the ones that got in the way, including the southern right whale, the stupid big red, the Tasmanian tiger, Lefty the bush cat, and assorted snakes, buffalo, horses, sheep, dogs and koala bears. The Book of Whoops is a book for all the family, with loads of laughs on every page. Girls, how would you like to take all your clothes off and flaunt yourself in front of Laurie Oaks? Sound wild? It can be done. Simply pick up the phone and talk to Roy. And so we come to the completion of AB's cassette. That is the cassette for the canonisation of AB. And uh, listeners, let's face it, your thoughts are being heard even as you hear them in Rome before the cardinals and that very august body that is the Catholic Church at its highest levels. But uh, no cassette of AB vis-à-vis -vis canonization would be complete without some examples of AB's work in front of the timber. And I refer, of course, to the Pakistan v Australia, the third test in the 82-83 series. This was at the Gaddafi Stadium on the 14th of October in 1982. It was the third test and AB uh, made a tremendous nine before he has trapped LBW before the wicket by Imran Khan. A mm. tremendous nine. This is the so-called innings of the two broken arms in which AB simply strapped the willow to the flute and went out and prodded away for the best part of an hour and a half, keeping Imi at bay until finally Imi got one through the flute guard and hit the uh, hit the uh, leg. I thought it was a bit high. I thought it was a bit high on the leg roll and or on the knee roll, should I say, and I certainly think it was going down leg side. But, Roy, you've had a look at mm. that uh, incident many, mm. many times. You were there at the ground. Did you think he was out for nine? No, I didn't think he was out. I thought there were dark forces operating there. Uh, but it was a tremendous knock from, uh, from Alan, and I said so at the time. Uh, I yelled out of the commentary booth. I, I just you know, lifted up the window and poked my head out and said, Alan, tremendous knock. And uh, he looked up at me. And he, you know how some people's eyes, when there's something special about them, have a sort of glow about them? Yes. And, In a light. Yeah. Yeah, they glow. And it was as if I, I couldn't focus on his eyes. I could only fo focus on the spot above his eyes in the middle of his forehead. And I could swear I could see an eye there. And it winked. Then, Roy, we come to that tremendous, the so-called brown innings uh, of Australia v England, 82-83, third test, Adelaide Oval, the prettiest cricket ground in the world. Mm. 
Um, this is the match in which Alan laid a second pitch mm. alongside the already existing pitch prepared by the curator there, and he laid it in a mere 26 runs. He was a uh, court tailor behind the stumps, bowled Pringle a tremendous ball. It was a miracle ball. Mm. I said so at the time. It's a miracle ball. Mm. It did or, a lot, or a jaffer, a as jaffer. some would call it. Indeed. Yeah. It did a lot in the air. It did a lot out of the hand. Mm. And the pitch, mm. I believe it hit an indentation on the second pitch and jagged back onto the, uh, mm. on, onto the uh, what we call the wicket area mm. and then clipped the top of the bat. Yeah. And uh, obviously taken behind. Roy, once again, you've had a look at that uh, dismissal. Mm. Uh, it was a tremendous innings. It saved the test for Australia. Mm. Uh, this was at Adelaide, wasn't indeed, it? Indeed, a miracle innings in front of the yeah. big spires at St Peter's. Yes, that's right. I, and I remember uh, I spoke with Alan after that innings and uh, I said, uh, how was it out there? And he said, oh, Roy, you know, uh, I, I don't... Uh, look, I must use the language he used. He said, Roy, I, I, I fair shat myself out there. And, um, <laughs> and uh, he, he meant it literally. And it's interesting, if you do go out and take up the left-hander's stance out there yes. uh, you'll find two little patches two little patches of the uh, of the pitch where I mean you could put round up on it you could put anything on it you can't kill it it just it's verdant it's just lush it's lush well, compared to the rest of the green. pitch and there are two spots mm. from the day Al's trousers exploded a, a bit got out <laughs> Roy, and the final evidence I'd like to tender is uh, Australia v India, the first test at mm. Chidambaram Stadium in uh, Chipoko, Madras. It was a tie, and I believe that Alan's... This was a, a peerless performance simply using the buttocks. He got mm. 106 old Shaftesbury caught Gavaskar. Yeah, he went out without a bat, didn't he? He did. He mm. did. He just went out there and realised it was too mm. far to walk back He just in. backdoored the ball. Indeed. Mm. Botted it around the oval there. Tremendous sight. He got a lot of runs down the leg side. There were a lot of LB appeals. But they were all too high. Oh, they were far too I high. I mean, if you're hitting the crack, you're not out. Indeed. Mm. Even though Alan Board is short. I believe his date is in line with the top stumps. With the stumps. top bail. Yeah, in yeah, with the bail. bail's yeah. on top there. But when you look at that terrible attack, they had Dev, who got none for 52. They had Sharma, a yeah. joke of a bowler. He bought a Sharma everywhere. He did. Singh, none for 135 off 39 neighbours. Yadav got amongst the wickets, but that was late in the day. Yeah. Uh, Shastri, a simple one, and guess who it was? It was no, he caught, actually, uh, I, I lie there. Shastri got one for 161. Sikanth got none mm. for none. Uh, and uh, so it was a very, very tame attack. But mm. AB made the most of it. The mm. battleless innings, mm. a brilliant innings, mm. and once again, a miracle of an innings. Yeah, it was a miracle. It and was a miracle. Anyone, you know, that short, who can just lead with the bot for 100 runs or more, I mean, it is miraculous. I think it's... I'm right in saying Wisden have recorded as the only battleless yeah. ton. Yeah, yeah, the, the only full-dated ton. Um... I remember, I remember, I don't know, I think you might have been with me when we had a look at his date that night. And I don't know about you, but if you looked at it in the half light, his bum just looked like St Peter. Didn't it? <laughs> with the keys dangling, dangling down. <laughs> as a bit of loose flesh that had been prized off by a very, very vicious capital there, the delivery. Yeah, and at least I think it's not as I've seen St Peter, but it's how I imagine St Peter to be. Was, yeah, was a saint anyway. Indeed, and so, Roy, with those three innings as concluding the evidence that mm. we tender before the Church of Rome, mm. uh, I'd like to thank you for your support in getting this off the ground. I know, mm. I know you've put a lot beside, mm. you know, your feud with AB over the years, the fact that he stayed far too long at mm. the top job, the fact that he's basically a hopeless cricketer and should have stuck mm. to some other sport. Mm. Baseball. Uh, your mm. baseball. You put mm. all these, what I'd call, black marks against him yeah. aside to yeah. come on board yeah. in your role as a lay cleric to the slaughtering trade of Australia. And I yeah. thank you very much for yeah, it. No, not a problem, Major. AB, look, uh, it's not a problem, Major. See, I nearly called you AB. Hey. hey. I mean, he's here, he's here in the studio with, with us, us yes. isn't he? Yes. And Alan, I feel him. Alan, I feel you're here. Yes. And Alan, you know, I'm, I, won't, I'm, I know you're here in front of me and I'm not saying anything you haven't heard me say to you before, yes. but any bloke like you who had as little talent and he'd obviously selected a sport that he wasn't really made for, yes. you know, being too short and too slow and you know, too stumpy and what have you. It was a miracle that you survived. It was a miracle that you went on to, you know, have an average of over 50. It was a miracle that you scored so many tonnes. Yes. It was a miracle that you captain Australia. So and well. it was a miracle that world cricket, the standard, plummeted so greatly, especially in the old dart, to make you appear a hero twice in that. Not once, twice. Uh, so all those, all these things come together and say to me, miracle.
So first stop, beatification. Second stop, canonization. Third stop, Alan Border Day. Fourth stop, thank you, Alan, for all you've given us. Let's just reach over and give him a fiddle before we leave. 